Hello, and welcome to my Therapist Plays Disco Elysium analysis series. So, on the last episode, we got very existential in our discussion with Joyce about the pale. And on today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. I have a couple extra thoughts about it and its links to different uh, psychological ideas which uh, we'll explore when we talk to the pale driver. And as far as the game is concerned, we need to find some money. We desperately need to stop like spending long existential tangents exploring the world and its deeper meaning and just actually find some cash to pay for our stay at the Whirling of Rags. So that's what we're on the hunt for this episode. I won't spoil what happens, but uh, let's just get into it. Okay, we're back. And, um, <laughs> all right, it's like quite late in the day and uh, we definitely don't have enough money for our stay at the Whirling and Rags. How much do I need actually? All right, it's time to stop fucking around, Brady. <laughs> you hack. And then we're talking to Joyce or Kuno or Elena or Elena. Okay. This is this is serious now. You? Got the twenty real? Not yet. Then why are you wasting my I, time? I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'll get it. Okay. I need. I need thirteen. I need thirteen real. That's it. That's the only mission I am on. I'm not getting distracted by anything else. Okay. I. It's it's time. <laughs> Still got, I've still got the amphetamines in my <laughs> in my in my hand. I need my trash bag. And I need my um my flashlight to help me find bottles. Okay. That's because right now that's kind of the only thing I know works for making money, other than just like walking around and finding it randomly. Everything's still cool here, officer. Uh, I don't think I'm going to pass that. I just don't think I'm going to pass it. Do I have anything that gives me more rhetoric? If only the speed would give me more rhetoric. No. Shit. I've already got all the... Oh, this is giving me minus one rhetoric. I'm going to have to put the hobo hat down. I'm going to put the, the, the glasses on. Visual calculus. Probably don't need that. Is anything else sapping my rhetoric? All right, let's give this a shot. Everything's still cool here, officer. 28%. We went from 17 to 28. That's pretty good. Do I have any... I have a skill point. I may need... Uh... <laughs> I really actually may need to sink one into this. Because I'm getting desperate here. Okay, by now, after like 20 hours of playing this game, I finally learned that I can try this check and then sink a, a skill point into rhetoric to try again. All right, man, I, give me some money, please. I, I am an officer of the law. Start with yes! a compliment, then work your way up from there. <laughs> Fucking this is about yes! Business. Remember, it's about business, yeah. Well, I fucking... I uh, need 28%. Shh. I knew that would happen. I knew it all along. Hey, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. But why, officer? Uh, After all this mess, the broken <laughs> seals, lying to you, come on. Think of it as an investment. An investment? What kind of investment? An investment in the sanctity and security of this reality. Or you could not make this about corruption and go with something even wilder. The thing is, is I've already gotten 
pass the check. So whatever I say, he's still going to give me the money. Maybe what I say now has to, has to do with how much money, though. It's an investment in me. A highly experimental human being. My risk-reward ratio is insane. I mean, that's the most accurate. My, <laughs> my checks have been all over the fucking place. Invest into me not telling your employer about your little operation here. I'm a policeman. It's an investment in good relations. A guy told me I need money to live. Otherwise, it's game over and I don't want to die. I mean, that's true as well. Well, he is a successful entrepreneur. He's a self-made man. I think that the thing that might appeal to him most is uh, the risk, the personal risk reward ratio that I've got going on. Let's uh, let's lean into that. I guess it can't be any riskier than speculating in exotic derivatives. How much are we talking about? I, look at that! I knew my psychology degrees were worth something. <laughs> if I can't read people to the point where they give me money, what am I doing anyways? I <laughs> I mean, I don't think he has one million real. I'm gonna go for the. I'm gonna go for the modest tenor. Ten real is a bargain for that kind of investment. You got it, my man. Uh, here I was thinking that I was going to spend the next, like, that the theme of this episode would be, like, finding money. <laughs> Fucking shortcut to success. Let's go. All I need is three more. I, a little bit of trash uh, uh, turned into fritta will set me straight. I'm a fucking... Uh, I'm already getting there. <laughs> this is the e this is game is fucking easy now. I fucking mastered this game's mechanics, <laughs> and, I, and I'm, a, I'm a master of surviving in this environment. Maybe it, maybe it was the amphetamines that that pushed me there. Okay, I, I think I've collected all the money from over there. I mean, there was a bunch of, uh, like, I think, seem to remember there being a bunch of boxes and stuff that I couldn't open before. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let myself get a little distracted. I kind of want to ask the pail driver about the pail now that I've uh, learned more about it. The woman is still hunched over the railing, her head swaying to the music, her eyes looking at nothing in particular. Huh? What is it? What do you want? I think I know what's going on with you. And what is that? You're a pail driver. You transport goods through the pail. Oh. Okay. Great. He asked the bank's rep about the pail, and now he's talking to everyone about it. <laughs> Fine then. Just try not to black out again, and don't contemplate. We don't have time for that. I, <laughs> he doesn't want me to start conceptualizing reality. Oh, I'm contemplating, Kim. I'm drawing existential conclusions from this. That's accurate. That's exactly what I'm doing. No, just for detective work. That's all I need it for now. Everything is related to the pale. My condition, the case, everything. It's all intrapanetic. I mean, all of these are true. This case is my immortality project, Kim. It's the most important thing in my life, and your life, by extension. That's very existential. I gotta roll the dice on that one. Exactly what I didn't want you to do. <sighs> Ma'am, my partner wanted to know if you work in pale transport. I want to know that. No offense, but your partner... She lights the cigarette. A white and silver cloud of smoke disappears into her mouth. <sighs> Seems like a bit of an idiot. What? I'm not an idiot. I'm a detective of the RCM. Don't say I'm an idiot. I blacked out after a night of heavy drinking and lost my memory. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, alcoholism. <laughs> like Gabriel Buenguerro in Pergunte Apoeira. You're the opposite of me, then. I remember everything, even things I never knew. J'aimez vous. The smell of liquor on Gabriel's lips after the shoot. In the motor park. The roses on the day of Franco Negro's coronation. On the grand stairs of Ryle. The smoke from the fouling piece when Dolores Day was shot. Man. 
Every fucking line in this game is just pure poetry. The look on her face, like an orgasm. The wound in her chest. My hand in my father's hand. Except, I never had a father. And I never shot her innocence, Dolores Day. So if you traverse the pale, do you like, maybe your exposure to things that have slipped into it starts messing with like your, your memories of them maybe? Over radiation perhaps? Heroic doses, Harifia, heroic. Isn't that dangerous? Thought insertion, dithering, the Grad Catalan Magistral, it's more than dangerous. It's sad, but at first I had to make a living. Now, when you've seen it all go away like that, rolling off like the sea, and then come back to this. She gestures at the square, the broken horse monument, the clanging of machines in the distance. What are we doing here for thousands of years, Gabriel? It doesn't have to be like this. We can just give up. We can just become a vapor. Man, it would be so weird to have like your memories like th intruded upon by like these other pop culture events that have become like your own memories basically. Like I think of like the Theseus ship idea that um the ship goes out to sea and every time it loses a part, another one is replaced until every single piece of it is replaced. Is it still the same ship? Just because that's what we've called it? That's because the, the meaning we've given to it? I personally think that it is still the Theseus ship just because you've replaced all the parts of it. Um, doesn't, doesn't take away like the fact that humans are what make things have a sentimental value or like a name to it, right? Like this mug is just a mug. But over time, my brain can decide if it has like another significance, right? Like we infuse things with uh, emotion that's not like objectively there. And if we're the deciders of that, like it's not like a something external like pieces of it falling away takes away that sentimentality we have to decide that it no longer possesses that thing because we're the ones who gave it to it um what i also think about i've talked about this in prior episodes i'm sure is the idea of like phenomenology which is a whole subject but the short version of it is basically like the study of phenomenon what you experience is your reality and that doesn't need to agree with what objective reality says, right? Like if I perceive that I am being abandoned and rejected and whatever, I'm going to experience real anxiety from that. My neuroreceptors and my nervous system are gonna respond with real um, reactions, which creates a reality of stress, right? This is basically like what social anxiety is, right? It's the anticipation of rejection and uh, being embarrassed and being seen and all of those things. None of those things need to have happened for your body and your brain to react with the real experience of stress, right? Um, and so our interpretation of reality creates part of our real lived psychological experience. And so when I think about like someone like the pale driver, if you were to, like a Theseus ship, take one memory out of my head, would I still be as much myself? What if you start putting in memories that don't belong to me? What's gonna happen to my personality? How am I going to sort out what I believe and what is uh, a, a belief com compiled from like my memories and someone else's? In some ways, I look at that and say, well, what's the difference? Phenomenologically speaking, you are, she, she is really experiencing those events in her mind. 
history may say that she wasn't really there for it, but her mind has the interpretive lens of reality that she was. And it, and it impacts her decisions. It impacts her belief about her life and what's meaningful and is there any meaning in it if I'm not 100% totally myself? Can you be 100% totally yourself? Because you, you are also a composite of all of the opinions and impressions of other people that you've taken in and internalized and iterated on. Like, does personality need to be pure and unaffected by someone else's personality to be uniquely yours? Probably not, right? Like, we're already a composite of the reality around us shaping our perception. So I, I kind of wouldn't look at this any differently. This is relevant when I'm doing therapy with someone who, like, I'm not, I'm not being a detective in that. I'm, I'm not there to, like, sort out what really happened to them. Like, to, to figure out the truth of what happened to you. Um, I'm, I'm there to work with you on changing your experience of it. And if you feel real trauma and real anxiety from something, it's not like for me to say, oh, your interpretation of reality is wrong. It's can we reinterpret the feelings that you have from it? So it's really interesting that they have this character. Um, it's a very phenomenological perspective. Uh, that's the way I see it, at least. What does it look like, the pale? Like looking into the ocean of the night, in the dark. And you cannot see it, but you know it's there. And it's big, bigger than anything. It's huge. Bigger than all the other things combined. What does it feel like? Nothing, until it starts. When you are deep enough, then for me, it's like autumn. Dark, gray, and orange. The orange of street lights and the color of streets and the electric light. It smells like autumn, too. It smells terrible. Nostalgia. Cooped up in the cabin, shaking. Terrible nostalgia. For yourself. For humans. It's too much to bear. She loves it. Hmm. Nostalgia is a perfect example of phenomenology because nostalgia collects your feelings about something that's not always based in pure reality. Like I'm nostalgic about a time in my life that when I think of it, I'm not thinking of pure, unaltered, unfiltered memories. It's kind of like the, the reactive feeling I have about it. And I sort of like re-experience that even if it's not fully accurate which is why I think we can be nostalgic for a time or a place or something that we didn't even experience. Like when I watch movies of like the 1980s or something and I'm like, oh, this is nostalgic. Like I didn't live through that, but I've ex been exposed to it through pop culture. And nostalgia can be like almost induced by a certain kind of music, a certain kind of visual. Um, it, it it's kind of like the idea of the pale, like imposing thoughts and emotions and memories that are only partially accurate to your experience. Like maybe that's what nostalgia is. It's like us crossing through the pale in a brief um, sort of way. How do you pass the road? In the belly of an airship behind the cell windows. So you don't look straight into it. It's not advised to look into it. Not on this lorry, then? No, the same one, a roller. They all are nowadays. A special wheels for connecting to the floor of the hole. She points to the machines, clumped up like toys. One last thing. You said we can just become vapor. Yes. I feel I already have what you have in some way. Yeah, I think that we can relate to her because there is this like 
we're not sure of our own memories, but we're experiencing real latent depression and anxiety and avoidance and addiction from them, right? They almost feel like dispossessed from us and yet we know that they are ours. And it's kind of like weird and dissociating to have all of that. So I think we can relate. They say there is a point, one that I have not crossed. In the pearl, super deep. If you stray too far, of course, on the U for one A, or in Lomonosov's land, where every step you take is one step further from home, no matter the direction. Mm. It's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past, there is a flip. Instead of writing, it erases memory, nearing some kind of indescribable finale. Interesting. Maybe you've been down the motorway south. Maybe we have. It's a story as lone horsemen tell. Lone horsemen, Herife, not pearl drivers. Way beyond the established pearl that's lit by radio frequencies, where it goes silent and dark, and the process begins, erasure, kilometer by kilometer, in any direction. The motorway south is a road you cannot come back from. What is at the end of the motorway south? No one knows what's at the end. I've only glimpsed the beginning. Mm. I've only felt it in the distance when I was a child. A child roving on the left. Her eyes close and her hands shake. So she's been exposed to this since childhood. <sighs> a sigh escapes her lips, then silence as she stares within herself. There is nothing more to do now. She's far away. Man. You fried both your brains enough for today, detective. Let's get some air. This one's far gone. Okay, Kim. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, got some stuff I could sell. Is there anything I should take out of this? All my intellect learning caps are raised by one. XP for orbs clip clicked. We got my boring cop. Got my sorry cop. Temporary research bonus. This is the motorway south. At the edge of the map, the landmass begins to disintegrate into pure trigonometry. The ocean melts, becoming a tangle of sines and cosines. The mountain range turns into a sharp, angled azimuth. Its green rain shadow dithers, like music turning into a waveform. Fucking wizards who wrote this, man. <laughs> this is the end. A half-remembered textbook from your childhood. The porch collapsing on the edge of the isla, transition from reality to pale. A single vector shoots out like a rocket. It's the motorway south, splintering off from the known pale. To where? Where does it go? Well, I guess I could just add a thought cabinet spot with a skill point. Yeah, why don't I do that? And then I will do this one. Okay. That uh, works for me. Because I should get another level soon anyways. Okay, uh, I'm running out of time. I need cash money. Do these count as orbs that I can click and get experience from? Let's see. Yes, it does. Okay. So even those little ones. I, I was thinking that it was only the orbs like that pass over my head. So I shall click on them all now. I'm going to see if there's any money uh, this way. Oh, shit. What? Measure head. He's back? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I got to save scum for this because I don't want to get my ass kicked. <laughs> I kind of gotta. I kind of gotta see what he has to say. What do you? What? Do not presume this has drastically altered our race dynamic. <laughs> I knocked you out like a god of martial arts. True. I said nothing about our personal dynamic. That has altered a little. He means very little. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can still become a super racist. Uh, should I show him the mug? Let's show him the mug. He does not so much as glance at the object. Know anything Stop about this? showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Boy is ashamed. Does he strike you as the kind of man who puts mugs into trash? Maybe. Maybe he does. Physical instrument. I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called hardy boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degraded. But you're all a part of the union. The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simony. Okay. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. Your woman? They think you ain't shit after I knocked you out. Measure, measure hand ain't shit. <laughs> okay. Money. No more distractions. Can I do anything with this? Is there any money in here? You're back before the cargo container. Its drawer has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. 3%. I've passed a 3%er before, I think. Let's give it a shot. And as it's always been, it's impossible to open a container with the rhetoric. Maybe that... you're losing your mind. <laughs> I, I, I'm coming back to that. I will do it, I promise. What is that? Is that trash? It's money! It's cash money. I'm so close. I'm I'm gonna be able to sleep. We sleeping tonight. Let's see if uh <laughs> let's see if Everclair has any trash for me. Any trash in his office I can collect. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. I've opened the door, you asked me. Can we discuss the murder now? I guess I could take advantage of this while I have the time. I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? A bunch of racist stuff. There is no way to sway this man in any direction. He is unsuggestible and unswayable. Just tell the truth. I may have gone inside and seen a collection of racist mugs. I did go inside. Weasel had the flag of the old Revachol on his wall. That's true. The deal wasn't for me to go inside, so I didn't. But what we did. I'll just tell him the truth. Maybe the truth will disarm him. Exactly the kind of fascist memorabilia I was expecting. Weasel probably prays to it every night for the downfall of the Union. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is gonna start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is gonna be good. What's your immortality project, Claire? There was a collection of colonial mugs there, and I found a similar mug in the trash with the hanged man's clothes. I've heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. Let's be explorative here. Let's not give him too much. By now, I'm sure you figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. So, I seem to have been quite on the mark with some of my speculation about like the different dynamics going on here i mean i knew that he was opposed with the wild pines but like what his motives seem to be in the mix of all this I'm harry this strike is the culmination of many many mistakes made by the wild pines group they tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries 
Yes, that's accurate. You mean our victim? A security contractor? Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire? He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Sadamaritsa, you name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Mm, Everything yes. they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Go on. Actually, I have to ask him about the village elephant. No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village, but the mercs and their brutality are very real. Okay, go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. Oh. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. They move the container? Yes. I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. I will. I want to try but it. But enough about me and my fun container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One okay. of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. Hmm. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is we dock workers are not pushovers. Hey, uh, look at this power play, trying to fucking snuff Kim like that. Look, me and Kim are tight now, all right? We've right? We've been through some stuff. Don't disrespect him like this. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. So the whole neighborhood is in on it. Who exactly did the pushing then? Let's ask him about the neighborhood. Potentially, Harry, potentially. We got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys, all ready to spring into action for their home base. Okay, who did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. Okay, so they are like a private military contractor, but local. So essentially the same thing as what Joyce is doing, just with less uh, severe methods, perhaps. They are like you guys, idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, Punishment must follow. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. If he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He's not worried. Hmm. I, I don't like how comfortably he's sitting in that super massive chair. It, it looks like he's not phased at all by uh, my slick detective work or my sweet glasses. There was a collection of colonial mugs there and I found a similar mug in the trash with the hanged man's clothes. Racist mugs in the trash and in the apartment. You guys are just light years ahead of me. I have so much confidence in the ability of your organization. Bullshit. I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best. Helping people with the power of politics. You're, you're strong arming. Yes, yes. Do you think this weasel is somehow connected to the murder? 
I, I love how Kim doesn't. <laughs> it's just yes, yes. Uh, well, let's, let's hop over that little hurdle there. Oh no, 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 no! I don't cross paths like that. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would never complicate things for you. But this weasel might have cleaned up after the killer. Believe me, Harry. He's a nobody. Just your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high-caliber case like this. Why are you protecting him? That's what I want to know. But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are known to be neat freaks. I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? I mean, he's probably protecting him because he has other unscrupulous means of his own that he wants to carry out on this individual, this weasel. He doesn't want he doesn't want him to go down by the book because then he won't be able to reach him himself. I'm just going to say nothing. I'm not going to validate this. Of course, Harry. Stoic silence. I like that. Very befitting a police officer. I'm not a real detective. You are. I don't like this mocking flattery. That's all he's going to say on this subject. Fuck. He's... he's, he's <laughs> I, 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 I get so... <laughs> I get so frustrated whenever I talk to him. He's just way too comfortable with all this. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? Bro, we are way ahead of that point. I have already deduced that. You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. The name of the company is Cronell this time. It might have been Sediment before. Of course. You're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. The remaining mercenaries are organizing a tribunal to take on the Hardys. Should I be telling him all of this? Okay, if I like get in touch with what my character wants. Immortality Project, we need to solve the case. Save Revishal, save the world. Obviously we don't want there to be a war zone in the city. We want to try to prevent that from happening. I think we're a little limited in our personal capacity to stop that, so maybe I can lean a little into what Everard Clare himself um can do the thing is is i i suspect that he wants that to happen because then he can he he can then capitalize on that like he's he set all this shit up so that the the mercenaries do some fucked up shit and there's more of a bloodbath and he can claim like see this is what happens when i'm not in charge so he wants he wants blood I'm not telling him shit. By all means, Harry. What's on your mind? You mentioned a lawyer girl. Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry. She came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Tell me about Titus Hardy and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men. All seven of them. Exemplary union members always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. You are sending them to die for your own gains. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. 
Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Let's him allow him the police to ask his men questions. Everard, I met these hardies. Can you ask them to cooperate with me? But of course! It's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. Bullshit! You've got something snaking in the grass. You can now go and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. Also, okay. Harry, here's five real. What? Wait. Why? I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. Needless to say, this is another move. Don't take it. I don't. I fucking. I don't need it. Okay. I. I got someone to just give me ten real earlier <laughs> if i had come in here before that i would fucking take that shit but i don't need it now this is, this is such a power play i don't need it i only needed your help with the hardy boys take that sucker oh i wasn't offering it to you just holding it out there but i'm get willing fucked. to share information get Was fucked there anything else no there's nothing else was it a good tour i'm not sure we made much headway here I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I have already deduced it. I don't know it. what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yet. Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left? So you have to be a social democrat. A rhetoric coming in with the <laughs> with the solid interpretation. My rhetoric is really bad, but uh, I appreciate it. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. Um. <laughs> I'm a money engineer. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to go with uh, I'm going to go with what I feel is right. I'm going to go with what I feel is right, okay? Uh, my heart tells me that he he's just hiding behind a political ideology when he really just has personal motives and and he's taking advantage of the fact that people have bought into this system and he wants me to do the same like he wants us to uh feel like we're associates in ideology and we're not this is another corrupt scheme isn't it i'm neither left nor right <laughs> doing my heart's tell me <laughs> yeah fuck it i'll take the centrist centrist uh perspective by the way i i'm not a centrist okay i'm quite left-leaning myself i and I'm not apolitical. I'll just I'll clarify that again because I see some of that discussion sometimes. I'm not apolitical. Uh, I just don't want to talk about my political opinions. That doesn't mean I don't have. It's just not what I'm after here. But I'm not like disengaging with the political stuff either. I mean, I'll 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 play along. You know, I'll play along with what the game gives me. I'm just I mean I'm not gonna seek it out. I, that's just not what I'm after. I, I, <laughs> I'm here to talk psychology. This is another corrupt scheme. What does your heart tell you about your lost gun, Harry? I don't need it. Does it tell you to forget about it? Yes. Or do you think it wants to be found? No. I think it's lonely and cold. I think it wants to be found, and I have a proposal for it. I you. don't need it anymore. And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You oh, just shit. need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. What are these signatures for? I'm glad you asked, Harry. The union is going to build a modern youth center in Martinez. It will be righteous. We're gonna get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. That's such bullshit. You need RCM signatures, maybe. Kim! 
Let's get let's get Kim involved. What do you think of this? It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Claire was very useful. But I concur. It's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm gonna hand you the keys to Martin A's and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. If you actually cared about who did it, you would just tell me. How about that? What will happen to the current occupants? They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth center designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Where is this place exactly? On the coast, Harry, across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there, a little village they're calling it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. Water drips from the eaves. A woman looks at her freshly tarred skiff. There's a pair of cavalry boots under the fish in the box, and the wind howls like a vicious spirit. <laughs> Love that shivers. Mm, my gut tells me I don't want anything to do with this guy. That's just what it tells me. I can always accept the task and not follow through on it, so I'll, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Everett think we're playing along. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here, you need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I hear there is some trouble with the waterlock, but they should fix it by Wednesday morning. Okay. Once you have the signatures, Mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then we can talk about your gun. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. Let's press him a little bit on that. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? Boom! Let's just drop that bomb and, and add a no comment. Harry, you wound me, Harry, in the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? Thank Get you fucked. for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. <laughs> you too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. Quit trying to split us apart. None taken. Do we have anything else to do here, Harry? Maybe we should press him more on this. Maybe we have, um... I mean, have we finished investigating the local drug trade? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really remember, to be honest, what, what our, like, conclusion to that was. I mean, I guess we learned from, um, Joyce. Uh, fuck it. Ah, yes. Your side investigation. Thank you. You've got some spirit clearing up phony drag accusations alongside this murder. I'll talk to the mayor and see if I can get you the key to the city, Harry. Now let's talk real business. Not even a speck of anger in his voice. That's that, then. Oh, I guess that's it. <laughs> All right, well, that's see fine. See you soon, Debardeur. Just kidding, but not too much. Fuck this guy. What do we got here? You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't look at this <laughs> in his office. Put it back for now. Okay, I've got to get two, I got to get one and a half more real. That's all I got to do. Maybe I even have enough trash to get that. I'm clicking all the orbs. All right. The tear machine stands in the corner. Your bottles clunk into the machine. Do you know what you should do with that money, kiddo? You should buy more alcohol. No, I'm not listening to that. I, I need just a little bit more money. I'll, I'll be back for you, Fritter Girl. I will always be back for you. The true protagonist. 
of uh, Disco Elysium. Any trash in the trash can? Yes. Okay, there's, there's a little bit. Let's go Johnny Orb Clicker. Can you, will she give me any money? Did we find, I guess we did find her husband. God damn it, I already told you. My husband isn't missing. <laughs> but you said you didn't know where he was. And I specifically added that I didn't need to know where he was. Well, I found him. Very well then. Where is he? There, point... The guy's sitting right there? Excuse me? I, I don't follow. There's something else hiding in the voice letter. A trace of worry. I found a working class drunk and I thought he might be yours. Because right, working class women come with alcoholic husbands. You know what? What? You were right. I do have an alcoholic husband. Although not that one. So is he missing as well? No, he's not. Or maybe he is. I don't know. He's probably in the park or in Shamrock somewhere. Drinking with his friends. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him. She completely forgotten about her books, staring blank into the distance instead. There. She's worried now. Kim, is it just me or do we have a missing persons case here? I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> Man, just to be completely clear, do you want to report it to the police? Report what? He's just out drinking with his friends. I'm sure the police has better things to do than to chase down local goofballs. Not at all. The RCM is ready to chase down every goofball in town. We care about you. Uh, I'm going with it. She sighs, but you can detect a slight hint of gratitude and relief from her face. Yes. All right, go ahead. Do you have any questions? What does he look like? Honestly, not that different from you. So he looks like a super cop. <laughs> Let me guess, he's disco. Oh, thank God, no. It hasn't come down to this yet. Why did you say that your husband resembles me? Well, he's slightly chubby. Okay, what else? else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. The lining is hand sewn. I made it myself. Hmm. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Who cares about the cold when you have your cool jacket to wear? You can completely sympathize. I completely agree. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. Can you believe it? Well, if the jacket is really that cool, I totally understand. Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. She's thinking about him out in the cold, in some park, or on the coast. And it's making her more and more worried. When did you last see him? Yesterday morning. He went to the library. He went to retrieve my book, and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. Because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. It just makes me feel weak. She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. I think I got this. Thanks. So you are going to look for him? Yes. She genuinely wants you to know. Don't make her ask. Yes. Thank you. Please do. Even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. She tries to maintain a brave front, even though her eyes reveal the opposite. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Prison 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? Good, good on Kim for, for letting us get involved in this one. It would be nice if he... Uh didn't give me so much pushback in <laughs> other areas. I will. Of course, officer. Yes, okay. I Let's get going, then. 
I just need a little bit more cash. I'm... I'm... I'm almost flush. Just need a little bit. I see a bottle. I see a bottle up above. I'm going for it. There's a bottle. I'm I'm so close. Fritter. Uh, people are just waste wasting money by leaving it around here. <laughs> In this economy? Come on. Oh, there's a trash can. I missed it. All right. Let's see how much uh, that affords us. I think we may only need just a tiny bit more. We're like really close. Is there any money here? Maybe I can sell something. Let's see if I can... Let's get rid of something I don't need. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Sure. Let me have a look. I'd like to sell my I'm clothes. I'm not purchasing any more clothes. And Shit. especially that tie. It swallows photons around it. Your mother is a necrotic object! I'm fun! Look at me sparking in the light of the projector! I'll check my pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? The postcards? I don't think I need the postcards. Yeah, these are like purely for selling. I think. Yeah, okay, I guess I don't need these postcards for anything else. Anything else you're thinking of selling? And uh, maybe I'll find some other use for this. I think I'm good. Yeah. I think I'm good. Another time, Pat. Yes! All I need to do is visit Fritta Girl now. I'll drop my tear in the tear machine. I'll get my my uh my king's bounty for cleaning up the streets. And and we'll be safe for another night of uh deep slumber. I'm coming, Fritter Girl. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I can't just wander around in the dark, dangerous streets of Martinez without my handy dandy flashlight. The tear machine stands in the. Your bottles clunk into Boom! the machine, and the money appears. Do you know what you should do with that money, kid? Fuck off! I'm going to bed. That's what I'm doing. I just want to tell Fritter Girl about my victory. Um. Is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. I love her. Uh, Fritta, tell me. <laughs> I wonder if I can ask her anything about the pale. Can you tell me about reality. the reality? You mean what reality? Economic reality or? I think I can ask her. Yeah, the physical reality. I don't know. What about it? Yes! I can ask her about the pale. I, I, this is the most... Uh, important dialogue in the game to me. I so want to know her opinion about this more than anything else. What is pale? I think science still doesn't know. There's only speculation. Oh, she's so humble. I love that. She doesn't immediately just come in with a half-formed opinion. She goes straight to the science. Fritter girl, you could be a genius with the right opportunities. Though, some of my friends from school have actually traveled through the pale on their trip to Windy. They said it was like being high. Look at her smiling. It... Fritta girl! That's the only time she has ever smiled. Probably in her life. And I would say that this is probably less about like the idea of being high, but just like, I don't know, the idea of 
there being something that disconnects you from reality, which is a very depressing place to be in for someone her age. Just, <laughs> just generally, but also specifically in this reality. Not that they would know anything about being high, it's just an expression. Ah, Fritter girl. Be best character. Look, I don't want Fritter girl to get into drugs. I don't want her to feel like that's the only escape from reality there is. But I trust that she's actually a smart enough individual that she'll be very discerning about uh, how she moderates her uh, little trips away from reality. Best girl. I'll be back, Fritta girl. <laughs> I just, the only thing I care about is solving this murder and then telling Fritta girl about it. It's like literally the only thing I want to do. Okay. We finally um, managed to um, get the money we need to stay for another evening. Now, I don't know if we should be doing that right now or if there's more to do this evening for the next day. I kind of feel like there's a lot of stuff I want to do. Maybe I could talk to the uh, Hardy Boys... Um, yeah, maybe maybe there's a couple of things I can do just conversationally before the day ends, but I at least feel good knowing that uh, I've got the critical dosh that I needed. There's also a lot more people here now. I wonder if I can do my karaoke as well. Well, speaking of money, let's ask Money Guy what's up. It is all about money. I've been learning that. Well, I think that's going to be uh, it for my little adventure today. Managed to get enough money to buy myself another night of respite. We'll be back on the case very soon. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a like and letting me know what you thought of it in the comments. You can subscribe to catch the next video here, or you can see things a little bit earlier if you support the channel either through Twitch or Patreon. Links to both of those and the community Discord are in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.